All right, public comment. And I did overlook one uh, sort of process logistics. We wanted to welcome, as always, Chris Horrocks. I believe we got Chris here with us from the Highway Patrol in case of emergency. Two west doors over here lead to exits on either side. Did I miss anything else? We got the roll call. We got the, okay. We're official. All right, so we have two minutes uh, for public comment. We have a number of people on the list. Let me just remind you our guidelines and rules for public comment. Public comments are limited to two minutes. Comment can express support or dissent for regulatory action. Individuals should not use public comment to complain about personnel issues or attack or defame an individual. Speakers making a highly detailed or complex comment should also consider providing a written outline of their words to the board. And I just wanted to remind the public that we appreciate and do read those in their entirety. So do feel free to revise and extend, as they say in Congress, send us all your thoughts and they will be, re they will be reviewed. Uh, please remember that children may hear your comments, be thoughtful and professional. Keep your comments appropriate for a general audience. If you have material with explicit language or content, we will ask you to submit that material in writing to the board at public comments at schools.utah.gov. Okay, so we have uh, first up Laurel Fetzer. Sorry? She asked us to move. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, members and staff of the State School Board. My name is Laurel Fetzer. I'm from Murray, Utah. I've been a here a few times. Um, first thing, I would like to encourage you to reverse course and go back to the first draft of R277-700. The legislature passed the Rights of Conscience Bill to be worked out at the local levels. It's not to be supposed to be superseded by any state core standards especially when some of the state core standards currently are not based on high academic standards, but on arbitrary social standards, more procedural. It looks to me a little like teaching kids to jump through hoops or measurement of soft skills like collaboration and grit. Um, many standards in the English language arts and the social studies are based in equity, cultural diversity, and not academic rigor. If the curriculum itself violates a student's or parent's rights of conscience or religious belief, a replacement is going to do the same. The state has been flexible in its standards in the past with, for example, military families, online students, or even all the COVID policies. So why do you pick now to violate religious beliefs? Why don't you just let it work out for what it's intended for, to uphold the rights of students' conscience and um, their religious beliefs? Second thing, the USBE just sent out a, the state and school report cards. I was just really surprised to see the current proficiency standards for English is 45%, the math is 18%, and science is 33%. How is this even real? Maybe we could just join the state of Oregon soon and not have any academic standards for graduation. Uh, one thing that I observe is that Online classes, classes depending on, on online learning are not cutting it. Kids don't like to learn everything online and it's rare for a student to actually internalize that knowledge in a meaningful way. I would encourage this board to start spending time improving teachers' ability to teach academic subjects. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel. We've got a serious new time warning. <laughs> All right, uh, Renee Pinckney. Good morning. Thank you, Chair Moss, Vice Chair Earl, and Vice Chair Hart, State School Board members. Your mission states the Utah State Board of Education leads by creating equitable conditions for student success, advocating for necessary resources, developing policy, and providing effective oversight and support. I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for your tireless commitment to the betterment of our public education system. Your dedication to ensuring that our public schools provide the best possible opportunities for our students is truly commendable. Your willingness to serve on the board, dedicating your time and expertise is a testament to your passion for public education 
and the well-being of our students and our educators. You have the power to shape the future of our schools, and your decisions impact the lives of countless children and the school community. Being a state school board member is crucial because it allows you to influence education policies, support students and educators, engage with the community, and contribute to the overall well-being and development of the state's educational system. It is a position of significant responsibility that requires a commitment to improving education for all students, serving the interests of the public, and contributing to the betterment of society. Thank you for your service, and please know that your contributions are making significant difference in the lives of our students and community. Our students, our educators, and our future are depending on you to fulfill your mission. I look forward to working with you in the future to support our educators and our schools. Thank you for everything that you do for the state of Utah and our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Lisa Clough. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I just want to thank you for your support of arts education, for specifically the Beverly Taylor Sorensen Arts Learning Program. I know that you have many fabulous programs within the state and truly appreciate that BTS Arts is a priority going into the 2024 session. I just have such gratitude for what you do and appreciate the work and that you value the arts for our students. So thank you for what you do in support of the arts learning program. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. Sherry Metal. Sherry, do we have, is she online? I didn't have a list of online folks. Okay, we'll come back to Sherry. Corey Fairholm. Good morning. My name is Corey Fairholm, the Utah PTA president. Board members, thank you so much for allowing the time for public comment. I'm here today to say thank you to each one of you for your time. November is National Gratitude Month, and it's time to show you all some gratitude. Gratitude is a simple but incredibly powerful concept, is the act of being thankful for the things we have, the people in our lives, and the opportunities that come our way. It is about acknowledging and appreciating the efforts and contributions of others and recognizing the positive aspects in our lives. I have gratitude today for the PTA leaders in our school who spend time and effort um, this year providing opportunities for the children in our school and communities. There is gratitude for the administrators and teachers who show up every day to teach the students and our role models for our children. I am grateful for the educators, the bus drivers, the custodians, the librarians, the lunch workers, the crossing guards who contribute to a child's successful education. I want to recognize the school board members on the state school board as well as the ones who serve on the local levels, the staff who works hard to support the boards, and for Sid Dixon, the state superintendent, to say thank you for all of your hours of attending meetings, working together to make tough decisions, leading by example, and working tirelessly to ensure that each child in our state of Utah receives the best education. Thank you for what you do. Parents appreciate your efforts and we recognize all of your hard work. Practicing gratitude is a simple act of kindness that will lead to positive change. So thank you for making that positive change today. I'm leaving you all with a little gift of gratitude for each board member. It is a stress ball. So when you are stressed, Pop the ball and it will make you feel better, I promise. <laughs> so I'll just kind of leave these right here. Take one of those. Thank you very much, Corey. All right, Jessica Mackley. Good morning, board members. My name is Jessica Mackley, and I'm so grateful to speak to you today. I love preschool. I previously worked for the board as a preschool specialist before returning to the classroom in August 2022. 
I learned so much while at USBE. I am a better educator because of my time here. During my time at USBE, I would hear board members um, or legislators be asked about preschool. On nearly every occasion, the response was to mention Upstart. Upstart is a great program, but there is so much more happening in the preschool space across the state. It was discouraging that my work and the work of my colleagues in classrooms continually went unrecognized by our leaders. Preschool educators help students learn how to express their wants and needs, understand and work through their emotions, interact with others, brainstorm solutions to problems, and so much more. Utah preschool children deserve human interaction and high quality educators that can meet their needs. Waterford, the developers of Upstart, have stated that the Upstart program should be used as a supplement to a preschool education, not a replacement. It alone cannot meet the diverse needs of Utah students. I come to you today with one invitation. Please come to our programs and classrooms. Come get to know us. We exist and we're doing great things. We need to be on your radar. We are a tool in your toolbox that isn't being fully utilized. We can intervene early and prevent many of the serious challenges and hardships that older students are currently experiencing. On the USBE preschool webpage, you can find contact information for the preschool programs in every school district. Please contact those in your area and visit them. You are all welcome to come visit my classrooms in Davis School District. Preschool is the first introduction to education for our students and their families. We need your help to make sure that they get off to a great start. Preschool is important. Come and see us. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. All right, next up we have Todd Kornberg, if he's with us, principal at Harriman High, and a student whose name we don't have, but welcome to both of you. Well, I'll introduce him to you. I, I'm, uh, I represent the uh, Utah Association of Secondary School Principals throughout the state, but I am the tired principal of Harriman High School as well. Um, we're unscripted today because there's a story that needs to be told from the heart. Um, when I first got to Harriman, we were at a 4% minority population. Today, we are at a 35% minority population in five years. Um, I've said that I got caught with my pants down, please don't send me to UPAC, but I haven't been able to pull them back up because of the need. I'm going to turn the time over to a student who represents this population to talk about what he's learned and, and, and needs. Sebastian. Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Panayitas. I'm a senior in Herman High School, and I'm going to talk about some struggles that I have be, being the leader of LIA in my school. So basically what we do is help a lot of the ESL kids, the new ones, and we also help the community. We have held uh, different elementaries and one of the elementaries called us the other day and say that we need more help with the ESL kids. Uh, we are trying our best to help everyone around us, but we need more help. We have helped the middle school, the Copper Mountain Middle School right between us. They need more help with the ESL kids and the translators. Uh, as a school, Harriman High School is doing what it can do best, and that is just helping each other. Even if we don't have the resources to it, we still are helping the community out. Uh, one of the things that I would like to say is that um, I really do feel like uh, we need more help. We are doing great, but the translation problem between all these new um, refugees coming to Herman High School is really is really becoming a problem because I can LIA cannot be everywhere. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate both of you joining us. Okay, Carolyn Charette. Good morning, I'm Carolyn Charette, and I'm the Director of American Preparatory Academy. Very excited to be here. I want to thank you for all of your amazing hard work. Um, I'd like to speak today on the proposed Rule 114 on Corrective Action and the Withholding Funds of LEAs. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you so much responding to my emails, four of you engaging with me on the phone, and four more on text and emails over the time when you're so busy. I really appreciate it. Um, I understand maybe some changes will be made to that 
the proposed rule today, which I would welcome. <clears throat> and, but I come to you as an LEA experienced um, with receiving corrective action. And so I speak from experience today and would love to um, give you three, three concerns that I have about this proposed rule. Number one, um, the rule does not require USBE to cite which law, rule, or published standard was violated by the LEA before they impose corrective action. This seems super basic to me. It actually allows USB to continue the corrective action based on violation of their perceived of a perceived best practice, um, which is an undefined term, and I feel like that's untenable and really has to be remedied in the in the rule. The second is it, it provides no right to appeal the corrective action, which I think must just have been an oversight, and maybe that will be fixed today. Um, but we all know how important the right to appeal is in America, and we, we can't leave it out here for LEAs. It could cause great harm to us. Um, having been required to give up a right to appeal at one time with the board and experience with the board, um, it's really a, a, a shocking thing to be having to give up your right to appeal. It just shouldn't be something that happens in America, in my opinion. Third, the proposed rule provides <clears throat> no guidance and no guardrails in, um, to the superintendent with regard to imposing financial penalties. And based on previous experience, this is a critical omission. The board needs to have guardrails um, on uh, when, when money is going to be withheld. Um, an oversight there. So we just ask that more consideration is given to this reworking of 114 to ensure that LEAs do not, um, are not harmed by this rule. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carolyn. All right, uh, Monica Wilbur. Hello, thank you. Okay, good morning board. In addition to reconsidering the recent unlawful amendment to R277700, this board today will also be looking at some major amendments to its R277114 rule, which redefines the USBE's oversight of education programs. These recent rule amendments paint a picture for the public that shows how this board is increasingly and alarmingly governing inappropriately, illegally or both. The 114 amendment uses a lot of words that give the USBE staff and board leadership cover to act unilaterally, subjectively, and non-transparently when it comes to enforcement of the law. And the newly amended 700 rule puts 53G10205, a law backed by no fewer than three constitutional guarantees, at the mercy of another piece of code that would make it virtually impossible for students and parents to realize their lawful constitutional rights. The board had zero authority to make this amendment. I've heard members of this board cheerlead for local control when that level of control suits their agenda and then turn around and push control of the locals when they think the law goes too far, as some board members say 53G10205 does because it protects kids from having to compromise their religious beliefs and consciences to receive a public education. I've also seen board members hand out goodie bags celebrating the Constitution and then turn around to punish board member Klein for her constitutionally protected free speech. These double standards are wrong. James 1.8 warns of double-minded men being unstable and a double-minded board is just as unstable. The USBE has no right to break the law, no authority to bypass the Constitution, and certainly has no business cherry-picking how the law gets enforced and who they enforce it on. Please keep this in mind today as you vote on these very important rule amendments and other business. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monica. Uh, let's see, Lexi Cunningham. Chair Moss, Vice Chair Earl, Vice Chair Hart, members of the board, Superintendent Dixon and USB staff, good morning. And thank you for the opportunity um, to address you. Um, there's been some hard acts to follow today. Nationally Board Certified Teachers, BTS, PTA, preschool, having a student. This has been a really good morning. And it's nice to, to celebrate education this way. I had the opportunity to attend um, a meeting yesterday afternoon in the Q's region down in Nephi with 
school board members, superintendents, um, we had legislators there, and just spending the afternoon talking about education and talking about students and all the work that goes on in our, our school. It just reminded me this in this time of Thanksgiving how thankful and how grateful I am to be able to work with the people I work and to be able to work on a regular basis with um, members of the board. As I was driving home, I reflected on how thankful I am for the, our teachers, our staff members, administrators, students, our school communities, um, USBE, the board, the superintendency, and staff. And I'm so grateful that we can work together to make things better for our students and our teachers. I'm also grateful that we don't always agree on everything, but we've made a commitment to work through the things that we don't disagree on and have positive, proactive conversation so that we can reach consensus and move forward and do what's best for students. I'm grateful for your presence around the state. Very rarely do I go to a meeting where I don't see at least one um, USBE board member at, at meetings, and that is a huge commitment on your part. It takes you away from your work and your family, but it is we do notice and it is appreciated. I know that the next two days um, you are going to be very busy. We I wish you luck on your agenda. Thank you for your, your work and the opportunity to, to speak to you today. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lexi. And April Wilde to Spain. This on? Okay. As part of National Gratitude Month, I want to express my gratitude for the freedom I have to hold my elected representatives accountable. Though I enjoy the introduction informing citizens that we are not to criticize anyone directly, I'll remind you that as elected representatives, you work for us. As a citizen of the USA, it is not only my right, but my duty to hold you accountable. And I will gratefully criticize my elected representatives as I see fit. I'm represented by Sarah Real, and today my comment will be focused on her. I prepared for this comment by watching credible investigative videos. We're not Michael gonna allow attacks of a personal board member. From if Michael you Clara's YouTube channel. In them, he laid out verifiable facts Spain, and evidence can. revealing the embarrassing Just ineptitude of USBE. Please. Excuse me? Our instructions were clear. We are not allowing personal attacks. If you want to make a policy criticism, we're all ears. This is not a forum for attacking a personal board member. You want to submit that? Please do. I'm sorry. I understand. We understand, but the personal attacks don't belong here. Send that to us. We're happy to look at it. This is not the forum. If you want to continue with policy critique, please do. We're, we're not going to allow. We've, we've had some things in here that really went beyond the pale. For our personal board members, I don't remember the last time. I don't remember, Ms. Despain, I don't want to engage in a whole long debate with you, but I don't remember the last time somebody stood here and made a personal attack on Ms. Klein. If they do, we'll stop them. So feel free, again, if, if you want to criticize on policy, we respect your right to do that. We want to protect our board members from personal attacks in this forum. If it's a personal attack, yes. If it's a policy attack, our job is to serve you, and you're very welcome, as Ms. Wilbur just did, to attack our policy and our decisions. We're just not going to have personal attacks on a specific board member. And you can do that if it doesn't go to a personal board member attack. Tell us we're horrible. Tell us we messed up a vote. We're, we're good with that. It's just not a personal attack on a bo on a board member if you can do that sure we just want to put the word out we're, we're, we we welcome criticism we don't want our board members subject to personal belittling and, and attack in this forum so i don't know where you were might have been 45 seconds anybody know Absolutely. It, I, I don't recall it here, but please, hey, we will do it. You're, you're right to call us out and hold us. 
Hey, you can go, Ms. Despain. If somebody says something personal about one of our board members, this is what we'll do. Go ahead if you want. You got a minute. We reset the clock. If you want to go ahead on a policy critique, have at it. We're, the floor is yours. We, we reset it to the point where we cut you off. So hit your... I don't know, two minutes, you, you guys are, we're, we're going by our parliamentarians, so we're, we're neutral, I don't, however time you had left, we're going to restore that. Two minutes, let's go to two minutes, I, you know, we're. Hit the button. It's, there you go. There you go. As part of National Gratitude Month, I want to express my gratitude for the freedom I have to hold my elected representatives accountable. Though I enjoy the introduction informing citizens that we are not to criticize anyone directly, I'll remind you that as representatives, you work for us. As a citizen of the USA, it is my right and duty to hold you accountable, and I will greatly criticize my elected representatives as I see fit. I prepared for this comment by watching credible investigative videos from Michael Clara's YouTube channel. In them, he laid out verifiable facts and evidence revealing the embarrassing ineptitude of USBE. Included in this ineptitude is the board succumbing to the childish whims of one of its members who unethically and illegally colluded with her college buddy, KSL reporter Lindsay Ertz. Together, they formulated a plot to take down fellow board member Natalie Klein in the public media. Sadly, this pathetic attempt to defame Klein wasted the time of USBE members and the resources of Utah taxpayers. Of course, this all resulted in a big fat nothing burger since Klein has never done anything illegal which could ethically warrant action from USBE. Meanwhile, Utah's school report came out and our scores are below 50% for ELA and around 30% for math and science. The scores in my children's school in Murray, which this official represents, are significantly lower than that. This is very sad, especially considering the fact that many in Murray are minorities who need a strong focus on academics to help them overcome barriers. It can only be described as tragically ironic that this member who prides herself on her minority status as a queer identity is robbing our minority students of what they need most so she can use the board to Spain. That's it. You're done. Mike's cut. We don't allow personal attacks. The policy attack was fine. We welcome it. Do not attack our personal board members. All right, moving on.